Welcome to My Creative Corner 3, a podcast about quilting, crafting, creativity, and life in a northern town. You'll find show notes at mycreativecorner3.wordpress.com. You can leave a comment. You can sign up for my patron site. You can purchase a virtual cup of coffee or even sign up for the newsletter. Come back weekly and we'll chat. My name is Vicki and welcome to the podcast. everyone. It's Vicki. Let me introduce myself. If you're new to the podcast, my name is Vicki. I live in a very small rural town in northern Michigan on the 45th parallel. Now when I say northern Michigan, I mean the northern part of the lower peninsula. The UP is considered the upper. So whenever people say Northern Michigan, they really mean Northern Lower Michigan. And I am considered to live in a touristic town up north. That said a lot. I live up north, but not in the UP. Totally different. I know. Gets confusing. But here on the 45th parallel, um, we get a lot of winter. Um, Our average has been about 140 to 160 inches of winter. And normally by the end of January, we have between 80 and 90 inches of snow. And this year we are half. We are just hovering right around the 48 to 50 inch mark. So I am loving this winter. We haven't had sub-zero temperature. It hasn't been bitterly cold for weeks and weeks on end. We've had gray days, though I will complain about that in the weather. I usually am complaining about the snow, but this year we got a fantastic snowblower and I've only had to use it a handful of times. Um, It's on a tractor and so we're prepared now that we're old Um, instead of hiring someone to plow our driveway, which you can't because I happen to live in the city limits and we have a very small space on where to put snow. So blowing it is the best. So I am a person who does many crafts. I spend a good part of my time quilting. I have a long arm and I quilt for other people. But at the same time, you can't do the same thing or it gets boring and dull, right? So I have embarked in 2021, this January, on a, you know, I've been taking a lot of free online classes. With the pandemic, uh, there has been a lot of free classes over the last year. And this year I decided, you know, this winter is going to be long because it came late. Um, In January, we started getting more snow that's staying on the ground. And quite honestly, uh, you got to do something for the winter doldrums. Don't don't confuse that with depression. It's, it's not. The winter doldrums is cabin fever. It's the being cooped up with gray days and you really can't go outside and walk around much because it's cold. And well, I also live near a snowmobile trailhead, so you can't walk on the trails because it's full of snowmobiles. And you know, so we built a garage gym. So I'll talk about that later um, in the podcast. So I do a lot of other crafts and that section will be the Our Creative Souls part of the podcast where I talk about the creative process, why I do other types of crafts, what my sister and I, who is the hour of our creative souls, um, we had a zine um, and then my computer crashed and I have not revived the zine and she and I have been both overwhelmed with work and pandemic stuff so we're just kind of getting back into our regular crafty creative types of conversations and it'll be you'll be excited to hear what she's been up to so without further ado let's start with the weather so yes we got about eight inches of snow last weekend and it's been cooler and we're expected to get a little bit more snow and the driveway is plowed and not plowed snow blown and it's we are really trying to adjust to having a new landscape to our yard um if you're new to the podcast last summer 
my neighbor who happens to own the parking lot that butts up against my back property line. It's the private school in town. Um, there was a lot of wind damage two years ago and they never properly cleaned up those trees. Well, one of the volunteers who has a lot of clout came through and took all of the trees down, even trees on my property line when we were told they wouldn't be taken down. And the next thing I knew, it was like all of these men in this coffee clutch um, are 75 years old or older in that ballpark. And they just, they cut them all down. And it broke my heart because this property has been in my family for 30 some years. And I knew the lady who grew up here and the trees were really, really important. So it's been weird because now I live in a fishbowl. On the front side of the property is a very busy street. And on the back side of the property is a very busy parking lot during the school <laughs> school hours. So I've been trying to lure in wildlife. Uh, it's very important to me to have a haven for all of the wildlife that has lived in this neighborhood. And with all the trees gone, um, the birds seem to suffer a little bit. So I put out bird feeders and I'm really sad. We haven't had much activity, but at the same time, the bird feeders are new and I'm sure birds that were living in those trees have relocated and, you know, Anyway, so what have I seen? It's not a lot of activity, but a time or two a day, about every other day, I will see a bird on the suet feeder mostly. The little chickadee feeder has not had much activity and the platform feeder that's more for the blue jays and cardinals, I haven't seen a ton of activity. But what I have seen is juncos, which we call snowbirds, and a couple different varieties of woodpeckers and nuthatches. I have seen chickadees and sparrows, rarely, but not a ton yet. And I know that there are cardinals and I know there are blue jays. Um, they're just living, I think, on the side yard properties. And they haven't ventured out to the bird feeders. Now, I have the bird feeders positioned in my garden where I can see them. But that may not be the best place. So we are planning on removing more dead trees that are near the main street, but we can't find an, a tree remover person to do it. With the pandemic and all, it's been rough. We had someone hired when the snow started to fly. He said, no, no, I don't want to do your yard. I was so mad. But this is the problem we have in my part of the world when it comes to contractors, hiring contractors of all kinds, workmen. They don't want to sign contracts. They give you verbals and you don't pay them any money. And then, you know, they screw you over at the end by either showing up and doing half the job and leaving, which I've had happen. And then um, I've also had this whole um, business of, yeah, 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 we'll, we'll take it. That's a great, great job. No problem. Give you a quote, blah, blah, blah. The next thing you know, they don't show up. The only person in the last two or three years who has not given me fits is my neighbor who is a roofer. I didn't know this. I've lived next door to him for probably 10 years. I, I didn't know he was a roofer. I'd been told by another neighbor that he was disabled and all kinds of other horrible stories. But the truth of the matter is he runs a company and he was pro. Let me tell you, he gave me a written quote. We paid the down payment. He showed up. He knocked the job out in a couple of days and it's been the best investment in this old house. So yes, this old house that I live in is over a hundred and probably 10 years old. I think it was probably built in the 1900s to 1915 in that ballpark. And it's holding up very well for the winter. It's not leaked with that new roof. We've got cold coming in on some of the windows. So that will be the next job before I retire is to replace windows. And it's, it's kind of dark in here with um, the trees and the way the house is positioned. So I'm trying to figure out where to put all of my plants, plants, you know, house plants. I bought a whole bunch of succulents and things to put outside this year. And my house seems to be overgrown with plants um, in 
The only spot I currently have one, which is in a north facing window, that's cold. So I'm looking to get another um, kind of a plant stand to put these house plants on and then put them in a different window where it's warmer. I've even thought about some sort of a greenhouse type of thing that I could put um, somewhere, you know, either near the garage or the back door as spring goes on, you know, then I could put things more outside and keep them warm and so they won't get frosted. But you know what? That's probably a bigger project than I want. First things first, let's just get some plant stands and get these plants out of the cold window because they don't look very good because they're cold and they need a little more sunshine. So I have um, a seasonal affective disorder lamp for me because, you know, we get no sunlight here for so many days. But the good news is we are past winter solstice and we are experiencing a little bit elongating of the daylight hours. So my house plants are things that I love, which is a relatively new thing for me. Before the pandemic, I started getting into buying house plants again. Um, you know, before that we had kids and dogs and I just had all kinds of fake plants around the house and I decided, well, maybe I'll try. Next thing I knew, I had clippings from work, clippings from friends, and they're taking off. I even bought a Norfolk Island pine for Christmas in 2019. And that thing is really growing. I hope that it gets big enough to put in a pot on the floor in one of the darker, it seems to grow pretty well in a darker area of my house. So I'm just missing the gardening. I love my garden in the summer. I'm not a fancy gardener. I'm not even a master gardener. I just enjoy it. And I miss my fairy gardens. And I miss being outside with the animals and sitting on my little flagstone patio, which overlooks the bird feeders and the bird bath. But let me tell you of a couple of things that I have found. Did you know that the Dollar Tree right now has some fairy garden things in the store. So I went to the store and I bought five or six little um, mushroom houses and um, little cutesy fairy garden things. They're, they're small and you can buy entire sets online for like, I don't know, I think they were $30. Just depends on which set you got. And I thought that may be a fun thing to do because some of my houses um, are broken or the paint's peeled off and you know after five or six years they need to be retired and then you can set up a whole new look for your fairy garden. I got lucky last year um, with all of the trees being cut down we had to redo our garden because they also destroyed about half of my garden and so my husband really spent a lot of time knowing my heart was broken over this and and he he was very upset too but we reconfigured the garden and I have a two-story fairy garden, a higher terrace and a lower terrace. And I am just going to keep building on that. And it's going to be so fun. Yes, it's all whimsical. So I have some new fairy garden things that I bought from the Dollar Tree. Love them. Dollar Tree is a really fun place to go. And next time I'm going, because I see them online and I don't know if I need a whole case, but they have stackable um, flower pots that you can stack up like a tree and that kind of looks like a strawberry garden type of thing but it comes apart and you can move it around I'd like to have some things like that for my patio um, for the succulents that seem to be they don't do well in my house in the winter Come spring they'll do better but I need something that's mobile because we get frost sometimes up until June and I need some you know mobile system. Like I said, greenhouse, remember that comment? Yeah, I would like to, I'd like to do something <laughs> like that and put my succulents out there in springtime. So I've really been missing the garden and I have been looking through, you know, going to Lowe's occasionally and Home Depot, seeing what they have, seeing if they got any 
plants on sale because that's how another part of my pandemic purchases were plants that were like one dollar at Lowe's and I haven't seen anything like that recently but I know it will happen again and then I got too many plants right I got so many <laughs> they're not that many it doesn't look kind of like a complete jungle in here I would like it if it did but I have found they still get gnats and winter. I've had a couple of gnats, but the neem oil spray has helped. I also got a lucky bamboo that, um, for a dollar and it got mealworms or mealyworms, not sure, little white fuzzies on it. And I had to wash the whole thing in dish soap and take alcohol drenched cotton swabs and swab them off and spray the plant. I haven't seen any more mealworms. I think I got rid of them and the plant's growing. So I'm very excited. So maybe in 2021, my lucky bamboo growing is a signal that maybe luck has changed for me. <laughs> I was thinking, well, what does it mean if you kill a lucky bamboo? That can't be good, right? It just can't be good. So the Our Creative Souls part, my sister and I have spent the last year really working outside. Now, you, I told you about my garden. She has even more garden and has a, lives three hours south of me. Um, in her seasons, much longer for the growing season, she has a fabulous yard, fabulous birds, um, feeders and stations. She's very artistic. So she has some really pretty installations and she's very creative at upcycling. She told me this winter they had 50 different kinds of birds coming into their yard for the feeders and she has lots of plants growing and she's been really missing plants too. So she started an indoor hydroponic growing station in her house with vegetables. She's got lettuce growing. She's about ready to harvest that and have all of her vegetables until the plant is spent and plant more. She bought several different kinds of seeds and they're taken off already. So those plants will probably live in the house and then come spring and summer, she'll take some more outside. But I was really impressed because she engineered the whole thing herself. She upcycled some things, bought a few inexpensive items on Amazon and at her local hardware store and she's got the grow lights on them and it's amazing. It's really amazing. I'm so impressed. She also started loom knitting and telling me that it didn't hurt her hands as much. She has rheumatoid arthritis and I have osteoarthritis. So her rheumatoid after a while just makes it really hard because things like the garden and her massive summer project was her and her significant other painted their house by themselves. Yes, big house, you know, tall, old Victorian house with very tall second and third story, but they did it. And we did a lot of landscaping and gardening. So that was our summer into fall projects. Now this winter, she got into loom knitting and I thought, oh, I'll try it. Now I bought one at the Salvation Army last summer because I've started um, reconnecting with an old passion of mine, which is, um, we used to call it antiquing back in the day. I love vintage dishes. I have tons of them and I have tons from my family and I really can't part with them. But I found a loom and it was an old um, loom that's a circle with really large pegs, but they didn't have nail head type tops. They were just plain tops and I didn't like it. It was hard to, to do any knitting on that loom and the loops would fall off. So my sister showed me what she had. Now the only hobby store I have in town is Hobby Lobby and I went there and found an inexpensive set with 40% off coupon might I say and I have been loom knitting and it really is it's different. You know, you still knit and you still purl and there are different ways to do knitting, but hand knitting outside of doing um, grandma's favorite washcloths, which I'm on a big jag of knitting them too, of, is a fidget to keep my hands busy while I'm watching TV. And um, yeah, the, it's the loom knitting is easier and it's different. And I'm just really excited. So I've learned E-wrap, U-wrap, 
curls. Those are the stitches, totally different language. But I'm knitting a tube that's a little bit looser and the tube is thick enough when you wear it and it's my favorite color which is a bright teal and I'm going to make a cowl. I love knitting cowls. I love wearing cowls. I love wearing them because it's usually freezing cold up here for most of the year and you know scarves and all kinds of stuff. So back and forth she's been sending me emails, I don't emails but messengers with videos on how to do it. I've watched a few YouTube videos and it's just been a great bonding experience for my sister and I um, because you know, we live three hours apart and it's super hard. Um, so Our Creative Souls, Loom Knitting. We have a website, um, ourcreativesouls.wordpress.com. I kind of let that go. There's not as much crafting going on in 2020, but I updated the things that we're working on, and Loom Knitting is the big thing. Now, the other thing I have been doing for craft things is just getting creative jump starts. I found that Michaels has online classes. Now you can attend a class live with an instructor. It's a Zoom class and you can see the people taking the class and then they record it. So like if it's at one o'clock in the afternoon when I'm working and I can't take the class, I can watch it on YouTube. And you can also watch it. I would suggest watching the live if you can watching the video first, then making sure you have all of your supplies needed, ask me how I know, and then take the class where you can start the video and stop the video. What have I done since January 1st? I've discovered the classes. Well, I did um, a watercolor painting that was not good because I didn't have the right brush. I do now and I may try it again but it was line work. And I'm finding that I don't, my hands with the arthritis, line work is too hard. But I do like the fun flowing and ombre look of watercolors. So I took another class, but this was the kids club class. And it was, um, you take glue and you draw, you can do snowflakes, you can do a winter scene is what the class was. I did a big blobby doodle. And yeah, blobby. Is that, is that a word? Blobby doodle. And <laughs> then you dump salt on the wet glue and shake it off so that the glue is holding all the salt. And then you take your watercolors and then you put it on the salt and it like disperses through capillary action probably. And it's been a while since I've been in science. But it's super cool because you can get ombre effects too and all kinds of things. Now I learned a lot from that first doodle as I tried to do the mixing of the colors on the salt crystals but you should mix it outside of the dump you know dabbing it on the salt and so far it's dried and the paint and the salt has held. What am I going to do with this stuff? Well I'm putting it in my art journal. I would like 2021 to have more in that art journal and then fill it up and get I actually have another art journal that I started that I would like this bigger and I would like to use that and finish I'd like to fill them both up this year wouldn't that be cool yeah I just got to keep myself going I also tried an acrylic paint and sip type of uh, class and mine was an absolute utter disaster the the instructor did a fabulous job I just I'm just not very good at painting. I love the process though. It was a winter pine cone scene and I love working with the acrylics more than watercolors. So I'm going to paint that canvas again and then try to do it. I bought some new brushes, bought a couple different paint colors and I'm going to try it again. It was super, super fun. The other class that I took, I know I've taken a lot of them. I'm just going to keep going here. It was called the moon phases. Now what I liked about that is you cut the phases of the moon, crescent moon, half moon, quarter moon, full moon, in fabulous cardstock. And I thought I could get it to download into my Cricut and I couldn't. But if I were to do it again, that's how I would do it because um, cutting out cardstock with arthritis in your fingers once in a while is a real bear. And I really, really liked how 
you could use sparkly, pretty things. And then on the back of the full moon, you could put notes to yourself or a little um, calendar or whatever you liked. I put a sticker that I bought from With Mind and Heart, which is super cool. And it says Mental Health Matters, which is a very passionate um, topic for me. And yeah, we I had a lot of fun with that. So the salt painting, the loom knitting, the acrylic paints, um, the snowflake watercolor that I tried in watercolor didn't turn out so well. But I thought to salvage that project, maybe I could do the glue and the salt watercolor on top of the areas that didn't turn out so good in the watercolor. Oh, it might work. I also did a tester in pencils. I like that way better. I like using colored pencils Prismacolor pencils are my favorite and doing a Zentangle style. But winter and fine motor skills sometimes don't always work for me. So those are some of the things that I have done currently. I have a hand lettering class that's up on YouTube now from Michaels. That looks way fun. Um, I had a couple of other acrylic paint classes that I signed up for. And in February, they have a lot of um, hearts and Valentine type things. So I'm real excited about that. Why do this stuff? You know, I got thinking about that. Boy, it's a lot of craft supplies. Well, <laughs> I had most of it all on hand, let me tell you. I've been collecting craft supplies my whole life. It was great to watch the class and be thoroughly inspired by the instructor I know that part of it is that they're trying to sell a certain product and they push that in the class. But at the same time, it was phenomenal. I got really inspired. I learned so much from every class, from color mixing to how to do it, to how you choose colors to go in a painting, um, to the kids craft, which was super fun. It was science. It was something I've never done in my life. And it was probably the most fun I had of all the classes, um, you know, because I'm more of a crafter. My sister's got a fine art um, background. She, she's she got some fine art college classes. And so she was trying to help me also <laughs> and trying to figure out what I did wrong and how to improve. But that's the whole thing. It's just jumping in the deep end of the pool and trying it, changing it up. It's going to be a long winter here in the 45th parallel. Um, it's going to be long also because of the pandemic. We just can't get out. We can't go visit people. Um, there's still a lot of people who are sick in the community. And I am doing my share of trying to avoid spreading it around. Um, I've seen my parents a couple times when the case count was down. I'm hoping by spring that we can see all of our family and be able to visit and have a meal and do all that. And I'm sure you're all in the same boat with me. So that's been the crafty section. Now, the other section is, like I said, I enjoy upcycling. So I have a few um, plastic cookie trays that look like cut glass that I had cookies on them. And I thought, now, wouldn't they be fun for a sparkly winter upcycle. Everyone's doing these circle welcome signs out of wood that you get from Home Depot or Lowe's and they're super heavy. They're like probably circle um, pine, pieces of pine that you'd use like for a bar stool top or a lazy Susan. And I'm like, they're too heavy to hang on my wall. But what about this sparkly plate cookie tray? I have another haul from last year's. I bought some metal sign um metal words that were already cut out for a dollar at the dollar tree it was like a pack of three so one i have less as thankful and i did um just get it done quilts folded um hexagon star that had very little sewing and i thought wouldn't it be pretty to glue those on and then yeah so i'm i was inspired by all of the things i have just laying around and trying to upcycle all of the stuff I have into things that may or may not work, but it doesn't matter because it was the whole process. It, it's like sparks creativity, which sparks ideas, which helps me in all of the other things that I'm doing in life, including quilting and using the computer and work and all of that. So it is something that I may wind up doing that 
this weekend as a project. I got to see what kind of glues I have. I don't want to put hot glue on a plastic because it might melt. Then in my house, uh, because it's old, I decided that I needed to redo some of my tablescapes and my displays and make it more bright and red and white and pinks for Valentine's Day. So I have pulled out all of the red, white, and pinks, um, little knickknack things and hearts and shiny and sparkly because I wanted to be pretty in here. And I'm really liking the colors arrangement with pinks, teals, off-whites, and for Valentine's Day, a touch of red. So I'm trying to do that in all of my accents in my house. Yeah, some of it works, some of it doesn't, you know, you just... At this point, I'm just making things the way I like it because, you know, it's even though it's eccentric and weird, maybe I have pom-pom garland in my dining room. I've got, you know, the red hearts and things that I used in my Cricut on candle holders. And I have um, banners, turquoise banners, or we call them buntings. They're triangle shaped hanging up in my craft room. It's what inspires me. It makes me happy. So all of that's been going on and I've been doing a ton of quilting. I know it's like, seriously, what have you been up to woman? Uh, well, back in December, um, I decided to participate in the January quilt along called the best friends quilt along with fat quarter shop. And you probably heard me talk about that on the last podcast, but we're down to the last couple of weeks, which means I had to, as part of promoting the podcast or the quilt along with Fat Quarter Shop, I have my quilt done. And so Angel of Halo Inspirations did half of the blocks. I did half of the blocks. She sent me the blocks she did. I put them all together and quilted it. And then I spent two weeks obsessing about not being able to get a good picture because it's January, it's snowing, it's windy, the light's bad. But I had some fabulous light this weekend. I took a few outside pictures. I had some fabulous light yesterday. And my husband, um, we went to the store and he helped me pick out some command hooks to hook into the binding to temporarily hang the quilt above my great grandmother's treadle sewing machine. So I'm not sure which picture will work best for... um, for the the reveal but I'm going to show all of them on Instagram in fact quarter shop I'm talking to them about which one that they would like for their blog post so that has been fun the best friends quilt along it's not too late to join in um they're promoting four different pads of foundation paper piecing that's pre-printed um, this week was courthouse steps. Last week was pineapple economy block log cabin. You put them all together and it makes this fantastic star. And I made two very minor alterations to the pattern. I didn't change the number of blocks or change or add, add blocks. What I did was I changed colorations in the pineapple First of all, it was a mistake, and then I left it because I thought I like I liked it better. And then I changed four blocks, the orientation of them for the center. And you'll see that next week when the big reveal comes. And you can see it on my Instagram. Or if you want to go to my blog, I did a little reveal with a TikTok that I made that has a out, outside picture of just the quilt top. I did that quilt and now I'm quilting a heart that is a free pattern from Fat Quarter Shop and it's really cool. It's using triangles on a roll and it makes for super accurate half square triangles to put together for this wall hanging and I used pinks and reds and white and I have white Swiss dot um, background fabric in the setting triangles. Love how it turned out um, piecing. So now I'm swirl quilting my free motion swirls all over it and I will get another photo. Now this one I am definitely going to put behind the sewing machine and I left the command hooks up so I can dangle that and get a good inside shot. I'm quite sure. 
that it will be better because it's a smaller quilt. And if I try to hold it in front of me, all you're going to see is my legs. <laughs> like, yeah, no, you don't need to see that. So that has been the two fat quarter shop quilt alongs and pattern promotions. And then I decided that's not enough because I got bored. And some of my friends on the My Creative Corner 3 Facebook group decided we needed to work on a group sew along. And Kristen Esser of It's a Simple Handmade Every Day podcast and blog last year or so put up a free pattern. It's called an elongated Irish chain, but she named it after the fabric line that she was helping to promote. And I put a link to that on my blog post. It said Irish chain quilt. Um, and it's really super fun. It's what I like about it is that it's easy but not so easy because you want to get all the points to line up right. Oh, she called it Loyal Heights, Heights, Loyal Heights Irish Chain Quilt, a free pattern. And it's really well done. And we've had so much fun as a group. Several of us are making it. Some people in the all white space block, they're putting other blocks in there. Like they had left over a bunch of tiny blocks from another project. So we have one person that did it as a Christmas quilt and she's um, doing a great job. It's just been super fun. I got a lot of advice on how to make a scrappy quilt from people in the group and we've, we've had a good time. So feel free to join us. I'm going to be making this one for at least another month. It takes 50 of the um, nine patch blocks and I'm only probably at 15 or 18 of them. So I'm going to be sewing on this one for a while and then I'll quilt it. I want to, um, I've got two customer quilts to work on the long arm and then I'm going to start knocking out all of my quilts, my Long arm went to the spa and it's working like a dream, even though it's 10 years old, it's working fantastically. And I want to get all of my quilts done so I can get them bound before it gets warm in here again. Um, I do have central air, but being, it gets hot in the summer and I don't like sitting under a quilt and sweating while I'm, while I'm hand stitching the binding. That's still my favorite way to do it. I keep saying I'm going to learn how to do machine binding, but I haven't done it yet. So that is the quilt things that I've been working on, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. And um, to be honest, I'm only spending a few minutes a day on quilting, probably 15 or 20 minutes a day on, on the quilt projects because they had deadlines um, or even the photographing, you know, that might have been a half hour because it takes some prep work. The craft things, I've done it in 15 minute chunks. So I just want to say that is my whole focus of doing things in fun, small bits of time. One stitch, one block, one row at a time is the tagline on my blog, which is my creative corner three. And, you know, I can't sit and do one thing all day. That's why I've never done retreats. And that's why I like these hour long class formats with Michaels and some of the other online classes that I have found. And, you know, keep it fun, keep it light. And then don't fall down the rabbit hole like I did over my photography skills and having bad light. And I have some artificial lights, but it, I'm not a photographer professionally. I do it for fun. And, you know, <laughs> for a day there, it wasn't fun. And it's supposed to be, you know. So the other part of it all is don't overthink and stress yourself out. Been using um, some mindfulness exercises. I love Headspace. They're on Netflix now. That's probably been the best thing I've found on Netflix. I'm a YouTube junkie. I'm watching all of the Time Team, which is an archaeology show from BBC. I'm watching all 20 years of it over and over. They're my favorite. I love it. It's stress-free. It's beautiful. They find great finds. They're in all over England and Ireland and Scotland. I've seen all kinds of cool things that they've done. You get to see places and hear the history. Love, love, love shows about history. So that's what I've been up to. 
And this weekend, I'm going to probably try to do some more acrylic painting and um, really, really looking at all of the things I have and like, is there more I can upcycle? And to get out of the house once in a while, I've been going to Goodwill and Salvation Army. So today I found one interesting thing. That's what I'm going to close the show with. With my favorite, favorite things to do is find bargains. And I love to go to vintage places. I love to buy secondhand at a very, very good price. Now, if it's good price, you know, in an in a antique shop, I will buy it. But I bought today, it's like, it almost feels like a flattened bowl or like a pie plate. It's kind of small for that. But it is in fact something that's old. And if I were to collect a whole set of dishes and accessories, I would, I would do this. It's a 1960s pattern called Swiss Alpine Chalet or Swiss Chalet. And it is um, got a Thunderbird marked on the back that says hand painted in America. And it is not an expensive 1960s um, stoneware is what it feels like to me. You know, some people call it pottery, I guess. It's by a company called Mar Crest. Some people um, have put on Pinterest and and um, Etsy and stuff that it's the 1950s, but I don't know. Maybe it went from the 50s to the 60s. Now, what I would love to find, it's blue with pine like leaves and it looks natural, real natural with leaves and they look like little pine trees, but they're not. They're elongated leaves and little blue daisy like things. But Fire King and another company made um, bakeware and glasses, you know, like tumblers to drink out of with the same pattern. Um, man, I love this. It's just, it's got a deep blue, powder blue and green. Man, I love it. I think I might have to start um, collecting this. And I love, you know, that it does have some really funky 1960s looking salt and pepper shakers and other accessories that are more of the turquoise blue. And and that's something I love. So remember, I said I like teals. I may um, keep my eye out for secondhand Swiss chalet. And, you know, I live in the Alpine Village in northern Michigan. So it kind of goes with the theme, right? So it just was like it was meant to be. I, I found it. I looked it up and went, yep, love love, love, love. The other thing I love is jadeite. I have a little modern collection with a few um, jadeite fire king mugs in my kitchen window. And I like that jadeite and lavender in my kitchen. So I had a little bit of luck today thrifting and I'm going to not go out tons, but I had to get out of the house today. Had some bad news. One of my friends is sick and, um, Yeah, I just needed to get out and clear my head a little bit and get back in the (laughs) back in the saddle again. 2021, um, I'm just going to make it the best year that I can possibly make it. And I hope that you join me, whether it's the creative process and trying new things with the art of creative souls like my sister and I, or whether you enjoy quilting, check out the few things I've been working on, Fat Quarter Shop has some great things and you can join the Facebook group and jump in on the Irish chain so along. So have a wonderful week. I hope that your week is going very well, that the weather is not as snowy as it is here, but in its own way, snow is beautiful. And I'm working from home, so it doesn't matter. I'm not going to the office anytime soon, I don't think. And I don't have to be there at 8.30 in the morning. I don't have to worry about Baja and out of the driveway. So overall, it's uh, it's been a good week here. It's been a good month, and personally, in spite of the world situation. And I am not going to let that stuff bring me down. I hope you don't either. It does affect us. Sure it does. And that's why I'm doing so many crafts, right? It's, it balances me and brings me back to the Zen set point where I like and like to live and enjoy being. So anyway, join me on some of these crazy experiences, even if they're kids classes. I had the best time. 
So this week, I hope that you have time to be creative and quilt on, everyone. Mm-hmm.